Okay, are you ladies ready as well? We're yep. ready. Okay, yep. awesome. So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, this is the first part of our Healing with Nature series. So we're doing this workshop online and then um, in a couple days on Tuesday, we also have a Healing with Nature walk, uh, which unfortunately is already full with participants, but um, hopefully we'll have more events in the future with these three ladies as well. Um, so welcome once again. My name is Stephanie Keeler. I am the Community Program Coordinator here at the Riverwood Conservancy. And just before I pass it off to the other speakers today, I would just like to ask um, that if you do have the means to donate to the Riverwood Conservancy, it would be greatly appreciated um, because of COVID-19, we've had to cancel all of our events and fundraising programs. Um, so just to keep these community programs um, coming and coming to the, the community, we would really greatly appreciate that. Um, as well, we have three speakers today from Peel Psychology. Um, so we have Juliana, Banzi, and Arushi. Um, each of you can do a quick introduction. Juliana, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Juliana. Um, I'm currently doing my placement with Peel Psychology and Therapy Center. So I'm studying addictions and mental health at Durham College, and I'm just doing uh, my placement here with them. Wonderful. Bansy? Um, hi, everyone. My name is Bansy. So um, I started off as a volunteer with Peel, and, Peel Psych, and now I'm also doing a placement with them. I'm currently in my fourth year of my undergraduate studies at the University of Toronto, and I'm excited for this webinar. And Arushi? Hi everyone, my name is Arushi. I'm also a volunteer with Peel Psychology, um, and currently I'm in my first year of Western's Master of Social Work program. Wonderful. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, we've been talking a long time about this, haven't we? So it's good that it's finally coming, coming together and hopefully we'll offer more programs in the future. Uh, now, before we get started in the actual program, I would like to just do a quick land acknowledgement. Um, we are really grateful here at Riverwood to have an area that we can um, go outside into nature, especially when it's in the middle of Mississauga. And especially during these times, it's very, very difficult um, times for all of us. So getting outside and getting into nature is really important. So we would like to acknowledge that the land on which we operate is the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and the traditional homeland of the Anishinaabe, Wendat and Haudenosaunee nations. So we'd just like to get that in there first, because um, we really appreciate the land that we're on. Now, this workshop will be recorded as well. Um, it will be posted on the Riverwood Conservancy's Facebook and YouTube page. So if you do not want to be on either of those, we just ask that you refrain from using your video or audio if you do not wish to be part of the final video. Um, if you do want to use the audio, um, option. We will have a couple activities at the end of this program where you can chime in and add any of your discussion points. Um, but as well, if you have questions or if you'd rather just post into the discussion um, feed, Arushi is going to be reading those and responding to you guys and also bringing them to us as well as we present. So once again, I'm Stephanie. I work for the Riverwood Conservancy. We are 150 acres of natural land in the middle of Mississauga. So often um, people miss this place. It's kind of a, a hidden charm in the middle of Mississauga. Um, we are a volunteer and um, a volunteer and funder based charity. Um, we offer programs surrounding environmental education, um, conservation, uh, horticulture, gardening, and um, we love that we can still somehow reach you guys, whether it be on site with just small groups or um, virtually through these workshops as well. Um, I would just like to point out before I pass it on um, to the ladies from Peel Psychology, uh, we have two kind of seasonal activities that are happening right now at the Riverwood Conservancy. One is the fall colors, so they are in full swing right now. Um, if you want to get your Instagram photos or anything like that, this is the place to come to. Um, all of our, our maple, uh, maple plants or maple trees are actually all brightly colored, red, yellows, and oranges right now. So 
Um, it's a really great place to see the fall colors if you don't want to go too far north. And as well, our salmon run is just coming to the end of its season. So we have the Credit River that runs right through the Riverwood Conservancy. And every year, hundreds, if not thousands of these salmon will actually migrate up the Credit River. And you can come and see them actually swimming and kind of struggling their way up the Credit River too. So this is just coming to the end. So. If after this program you're interested in coming to Riverwood, those are two things to look forward to for sure. Um, I will pass it off to Juliana to do an introduction about Peel Psychology and Therapy Center. So hi everyone, I'm Juliana once again from Peel Psychology and Therapy Center. So we are a therapy center or counseling center. We have amazing uh, different types of clinicians here at our center. So we have social workers, psychotherapists, psychologists, and they all have a big warm heart. So we have a really great team. Um, I also want to acknowledge our intake associates uh, for helping us out a lot. Um, and what I also appreciate from Peel Psychology and Therapy Center is that they do help out students. Uh, they want to engage them in learning. Um, so yeah, I wanted to appreciate that as well. What we also do is uh, we do workshops like this one. So this is our first workshop uh, collaboration with the Riverwood Conservancy. And uh, we also do a monthly uh, workshop called Meditation Through Art. So uh, it's a little bit similar to this, but a different topic, a similar platform. It's virtual, it's free. So if anyone else is also interested in that, feel free to reach out to us. Wonderful. Okay, everyone. So um, before, you know, we get into all the deep dives of um, today's nature aspect, um, something I want to kind of ask everyone, this is kind of like an open ended. So you can use the chat option. So right now, you know, is a stressful time, everything with from COVID to other events that have happened, it's confusing, you know, it's stressful, it's unclear, it's scary, it's chaotic, it's everything, you know, how, how would you describe, you know, things right around you right now? Like how would you, if you had to use one word to describe your current situation, how would you, um, what would you say? Like for me, I would say that, you know, right now it's a very stressful time just because of uh, I'm studying from home. It's, it's virtual. It's not, I'm not, I don't like it all, everything. So yeah, I see some comments where there are people are saying overwhelming, unprecedented, stressful. Yes, everything. Exactly. You know, right now is, it's so unclear that Exactly, anxious, confusing, yeah. Let's see if we get other stressful, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uncertain, definitely. I would say tiring. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you 100% on that. Very tiring. <laughs> and um, yeah, so definitely, you know, all of those stuff. And I'm pretty, and I'm sure like these are, these were just, you know, a few words, but we can definitely get into more. So before, you know, we explained the whole nature aspect, um, Stephanie, can you go on the next slide, please? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna start off with explaining certain stuff. So I'm gonna start off by explaining what anxiety is. I'm sure all of you probably are aware with the term. I'm not, I'm sure that you guys are not like, it's not a brand new term, but just to just to make sure that we're all on the same page, just a little bit of information. So, you know, most people experience stress and anxiety from time to time. You know, you don't have to experience it from time to time. And it, it works and it, everyone experiences it differently. I want to first acknowledge that. And, you know, anxiety is like a, fee, uh, a feeling of fear, worry, uneasiness, you know. It can be a reaction to stress or it can occur in people who are unable to identify certain um, th situations in their life. Now, I do want to make it clear that stress and anxiety are not always bad. You know, stress, um, sorry, anxiety in the short term can actually help you overcome certain challenges, right? So if, when we're talking about those challenges, I mean, um, you know, it, it helps us motivate to do things that we're not that we need to get done right away. For example, if I have to study for a test, you know, I'm anxiety, I'm sorry, I'm anxious. So I'm definitely going to be using, I'm, my anxiety is definitely going to be up and I'm probably going to be studying for the whole night. Now, does that mean that's a good thing? Obviously not. You know, can I manage my time better? 100%. But so at time to time, you know, there are certain situations that your anxiety, you know, you use your anxiety or you have anxiety, which is completely normal. However, if your anxiety begins you know, interfering with your daily life, that is when we know that it's a more serious issue. And that is when you need to realize that, you know, this is not something that just happens time to time. It can get, it can get very much more serious, very, very fast. 
So, and like, and like the slide mentions, you know, it comes and goes, definitely. It, it's not the same for everyone. And it usually occurs after life events, but then goes away. That's often a very strong misconception with anxiety that, you know, it has to occur after a certain big situation. Not necessarily. Some people have anxiety from the beginning. They're just not aware that that's what anxiety is. So, um, Stephanie, can you go on the next slide? Okay. So the next topic that we are gonna be focusing on is depression. I'm sure like with anxiety, you are aware with the term what, with what depression is. But just again, just to make sure we're all on the same page, you know, depression is a disorder and um, is a major depressive disorder. And it's, it's, it's a common disorder that, that makes you feel negative, that makes you think low about, about yourself or the situation around you. Fortunately, it is treatable. You know, that is a very strong misconception that depression is not treatable. That is not true. It is. And often depression can cause, you know, feelings of sadness or loss of interest in activities that you once enjoyed. It can lead to a variety of emotional and physical problems. And, you know, you, it can decrease your ability to function at work or from home, you know, right now. You know, obviously COVID-19 has been such a big impact in everyone's life, I'm sure. And, you know, this, and I'm not saying that everyone has depression, please, please do note that. But I'm just saying that sometimes if you're, you know, getting a little bit overwhelmed and that those kind of feelings, again, that, that's completely normal. You know, this, this situation is very unprecedented. We have never faced this kind of situation. At least I haven't. I'm not sure about everyone else. Um, but exact. so depression is something that a lot of people have um, have dealt with throughout this um, COVID-19, so for the last six or seven months. So depression symptoms can actually vary from, you know, mild to severe. So they can include, you know, feeling sad or having depressed mood, you know, the loss of interest, like I said, you know, you might enjoy painting from time to time, but maybe you don't enjoy it so more. Again, that is something that you need to kind of uh, think about on your own. I obviously can't talk about every single situation, but that, these are just some examples that I'm saying, giving out. And everyone, everyone experiences it differently. This is a very strong point I want to make with depression that often, you know, when, when it's shown in like movies or TV shows, it's shown like as a person who's just sitting on the couch, eating ice cream and crying. Yes, many people do do that. But again, it, it varies for everyone, right? It, you ha it doesn't, there's no like formula to depression. There's no formula to anxiety. All these three things that I'm going to be describing, they all work and they all work in a different way in accordance to you, right? And in the loss of energy or like being, you know, fatigue, that is also something that's very common. And depression is different from sadness or grief. You know, sadness, grief or something that that is usually a moment, momentary or like a brief time period, right? If you notice that, you know, you've been sad for more than maybe nine to 10 months, again, I'm just giving you like a example, like I'm just being, I'm not being very specific right now, but that's the point. Um, definitely that is something that you can kind of sit down and think about and explore more and see if that is something that you've been dealing with. So yeah. Um, Stephanie, can you go on the next slide, please? Yeah, I saw someone actually put their hand up. Arushi, is there any questions or anything for Banzi at this time? Yeah, definitely. I'm actually not seeing any questions in the chat. Okay, I just saw someone put their hand up briefly, so oh, okay. I didn't know if there was a question. Um, yeah, I mean, if someone has a question in regards to depression, um, if you want to ask it right now, you can ask it right now. If you want to wait until the end, you can do so as well. Okay, I'll go on to the next slide anyways, and we'll keep an eye on the chat. Oh, yeah. We'll just um, keep, you can write it down on the chat and then Arushi will let me know in the end if there's something specific you want to ask about depression. And then the last um, uh, topic that we're going to be talking about, well, from my end, sorry, <laughs> is um, ADHD. So ADHD stands for Att Attention Deficit Hyperactive Hyperactive Disorder. Sorry, I'm not pronouncing it properly, probably. Um, but ADHD is often, there's a very strong misconception with this as well, that ADHD is similar to anxiety. Yes and no, you know, um, again, the first point you see is that ADHD is result is often associated with feelings of worry, fear, uneasiness. Well, yeah, anxiety also does that. But ADHD differs in certain aspects than how anxiety does. So ADHD is a mental health disorder and includes a combination of persistent problems such as difficulty paying attention, hyperactive, impulsive behavior, and, an, and adult ADHD can lead to, you know, maybe unstable relationship, poor work or school performance, low self-esteem, and other problems, right? Again, I'm not being very specific here because that's the, that's the main thing, right? 
these ADHD, anxiety, depression, there's no, like I said before, there's no formula. It's kind of just what we know from a general aspect, but I'm making it clear that there's more than, than what the general consensus says. And there's often, ADHD actually has a three, group, three groups of symptoms. So there's inattention, which is, so often, this is um, often found in children. So you may actually not even notice it until the child goes to school. In adults, it's actually much easier to notice because like maybe from work or in social situations. The next one is hyperactivity. So this means that it's just very hard for you to sit still. You know, you, it's hard for you to stay quiet. Again, maybe do certain kind of hobbies. You talk excessively, you know, there's restlessness. Again, these are very common things that a lot of people experience, right? Right now is such a full time that there might be something that, you know, I'm saying something and you're like, oh my God, yes, I do this. That does not mean that you have ADHD. You know, there's many, many different things that kind of combine together and then you get the diagnosis that yes, you have ADHD or no, you don't. So I do want to make it clear that please do not diagnose, self-diagnose yourself. If you do think that you have any one of these, I would uh, suggest you to seek maybe professional help because they're probably going to be the, your best source. The last one is impulsivity. So impulsivity is focused on, you know, the impatientness, right? You can't, you can't sit still again. You know, you have a hard time to waiting to talk or react, right? You're very like fidgety, hands-on. You just have to experience, um, sorry, you have to um, talk or react right away. That is also a very strong um, thing that people with ADHD have. And like um, with anxiety and depression, everyone experiences it differently. It's, and it is treatable. All three things are treatable. So if you do that you have something like this, and like I said before, maybe professional help is your best source. So I hope that I made it a little bit clear in regards to what depression, ADHD, and anxiety are. Like I said before, if you have any questions, you can um, put it in the chat. But Stephanie, you can go on the next slides. You have like a very short period of time to talk about very difficult situations. Exactly, so yeah. I did a, a really good job. <laughs> Thank you. So the last thing I definitely want to make clear is that if you noticed, if you were paying attention, um, the anxiety, the ADHD, and the depression um, slides had specific terms, right? It had stress. It had, or, or I talked about stress, impulse inhibition, insomnia. So stress, we already talked about what stress is, right? Impulse inhibition is just that impulsivity, right? It's hard, very hard for you to just sit still, maybe anger, that kind of stuff, right? And then insomnia, and then anxiety, depression, and then ADHD. So what does this slide refer to? So it says how, you know, it can start off with stress, you know? Maybe it's, it's really hard for you to find work. Again, this is just an example. Um, that can often lead to maybe anger or, you know, restlessness. So that is impulse inhibition. Obviously, that anger, restlessness can often result in insomnia, just trouble sleeping, right? That often, you know, can also result in maybe anxiety, depression, ADHD. But you have, but I do want to make it clear that this slide is showing the aspect of, well, you don't have to get stressed first. You don't have to then get impulse inhibition, then insomnia, and that leads to depression, ADHD. No, it works like a loop, right? It works kind of like a slide. <laughs> um, where, you know, it can start off with anxiety, ADHD, and, you know, maybe you backtrack and then you have trouble sleeping. Maybe that results in a lot more stress, or you start off with impulse inhibition, you know, there's some, certain anger um, things, things that make you angry, you know, that it starts off with from that, and then, you know, that results in um, insomnia. Again, this is sort of like a loop where it kind of just, it's intertwined when it, within itself, right? All of them work together, and all of them are separate on their own. So I do want to make it clear that, you know, it does, it, these three things do not lead to anxiety, depression, or ADHD, or that um, anxiety, depression, and ADHD lead to these three things. So they're all kind of intertwined with um, each other. So, yeah. So the slide here might look a little bit crazy, but it's kind of going off of what Bansi just discussed. Um, so here, we're talking about these three things, ADHD, anxiety, and depression. And um, the purpose of today is to talk about how exposing yourself to nature can kind of help to um, reduce some of these symptoms that we feel when we're anxious or when we have depression or when we have ADHD. So again, the symptoms of anxiety, ADHD, and depression aren't um, like a set in stone thing. Some, some people with anxiety may have more symptoms than another person. Some people may have less. The severity also uh, depends on the person. So it doesn't mean that if you have, um, if you have 
insomnia, you're right away going to get anxiety or depression. It, it can vary. And they all are kind of intermixed into each other. So the question is, how the heck is nature supposed to help us reduce some of this anxiety, depression, and the ADHD? Well, it's not directly, um, if you go out in nature, you're not just going to automatically feel, oh my God, my anxiety is gone. I am cured. Voila. No. So what it does is exposing yourself to nature can help to reduce some of these symptoms that we feel when we're going through something like anxiety or depression, or if we have ADHD. So I'm gonna use an example here. Um, let's see here. Being exposed to nature increases our happiness. That's what studies have found. And this can be because when we're outside in nature, we are seeing, let's, let's use fall as an example. Since we're in fall, there's beautiful leaves outside. You're getting that fresh oxygen. You're outside opening your lungs. Um, with oxygen going to your lungs, you get more oxygen. It helps to reduce that anxiety because a lot of the times when we have anxiety, we feel trapped, we can't breathe, we're very tight. And going outside and bringing in that fresh air with nature helps to open up our chest, um, get more oxygen flowing, and our, gets our body into a less, a less panicked state. So tight, panicked, um, very confined to go outside, open up, get fresh air. We're seeing beautiful colors outside. Maybe you'll see some cute little wildlife, little bunny or a deer or something. That's all going to increase your happiness. It's going to make you feel good. And how is that happening? Well, there's some hormones. I'm not going to go into to be too scientific for you guys, but we have some happiness hormones in our body. I don't know if any of you have heard of them, but there's serotonin and there's dopamine. And so going outside and seeing all this wonderful stuff, that's going to help increase our serotonin, increase our dopamine, our feel-good hormones. And so maybe at night when you go to sleep, you're going to be a little bit less stressed because you have those feel-good hormones. You're going to reduce your stress levels. And by reducing stress, it might help you to prevent insomnia. You're not stressed. You're not up at night going on with your thoughts all night, right? Because you, you just went outside, went on a beautiful walk, saw a cute little bunny. You're feeling good. So it's going to reduce your stress levels, reduce your insomnia, helping you to get a better night's sleep, therefore helping you to reduce some of that anxiety that you may feel, maybe reduce some of that uh, depression that you may feel. Another great example is um, how being out in nature also increases our imagination, um, our attention, our focus. And this is very important because um, this is going to also go into one of our activities later on. Um, so what it does is um, when we're outside, we're seeing, uh, uh, we're being out with the nature, we're not being, you know, sometimes people may feel like they're a little bit judged if they're out in public, but when you're outside in nature, you're just you and nature together. So it's going to help you to really focus on the beautiful leaves, focus on the crunching between your feet when you're stepping on them. And so that focus that attention to detail, that increase in imagination creativity can again help to reduce some of those symptoms of ADHD, maybe help to reduce some of the impulse, impulsive, impulsiveness. Um, and so this, these are just some ways of how when you expose yourself to nature, it really affects um, stuff internally and externally to help reduce some of your feelings of anxiety, depression, and ADHD. Um, so I'm going to move into more of um, what nature actually does to, to you when you go outdoors. Um, thank you so much, Vansy and Juliana. You took uh, all the hard stuff. You did all the education portion of it. And I'm just going to talk about nature for a bit. Um, okay. So a really key aspect of meditation and mindfulness is connecting to the four elements. So earth, air, fire, and water. So we're going to start with earth and what we're going to do is kind of connect ourselves to earth as the element and also connect a tree. So I'm going to take a tree and ourselves as the example along the way. So you look around, you see all these trees, they're obviously using the earth um, to stand tall, to, to stay in the ground. Um, but there's a bigger story that's lying here. 
beneath the ground in the earth, there are so many different little connections that the trees are sending to each other. They have a whole fungal network underground, under our feet when we're outdoors, where they are talking to each other. Um, there's a really good book called The Hidden Life of Trees, and it explains all about this. And it's a wonderful first start if you kind of want to learn more about um, being mindful and actually understanding what's happening around us. So if a tree was to get sick, um, or if it was to get a bug on it, or if a human was to come and cut it down, it will actually send signals through this fungal network to other trees saying, hey, I'm not feeling too good. And all these other trees will actually react. They'll either produce chemicals that um, discourage a bug to come on them, or they will send nutrients and water towards this tree that's, that's um, hurting. And it will actually gain that energy and, and um, hopefully fight whatever it's dealing with. So um, when we're connecting to a tree, there's a, there's a big story underground that connects us to earth and it's connection. And for us humans right now, connection and being grounded to earth is super important. We're dealing with unprecedented times and it can be very stressful, but we have to remember that there is that connection and that grounding feature that we have when we go out in nature and be mindful of what's happening. Another really great thing to do is just think about how many little bugs and salamanders and little things are beneath the earth. It's just crazy. There's a whole other world underneath there. So the next element we're going to talk about is water. Obviously for a tree, water is very, very important. They use that the roots that are in the ground to suck up that water. Um, we have a wonderful uh, credit river that flows right through Riverwood and often when we do on-site walks, um, we'll just sit there for five minutes and be mindful. Um, the sound of water and the sight of water uh, has healing properties in itself. Um, if you just sit by water for a bit, it actually um, contributes to your mental and physical health. And um, Indigenous people have been talking about these stories of water for many, many years and how powerful the healing properties have with water. Um, one story we can take from water is how it flows. So if there's a giant rock in the way, the water will either go around it or I'll go over top of it. So right now we have uh, a giant boulder in our way, which is COVID-19. Um, and on top of that, we have many little tiny rocks that are also stacked on top of that. And often it seems like we can't get around this rock. But if we kind of connect with water and understand that we can flow around this, yes, it's gonna be there, we can get past this. Um, and to understand that we're all in the same situation together right now. The third element I'm going to talk about is air, um, an integral part of plants, um, not just oxygen, but also the CO2 that's in our air. Um, plants rely on our CO2 that we breathe out in order for them to suck in and actually gain energy and then they breathe out the oxygen that we breathe in. So we really rely on trees for this. Um, but air also relates to us in perspective. So seeing the bigger picture than um, sometimes what we, we see in our brains. So um, when I get nervous or anxious about something, often I have this one perspective on things and I can't really get past it and I, I kind of feel like it's the end of the world. But if you kind of relate yourself and relax and go out into nature and breathe in fresh air and understand that there is a bigger picture and um, maybe your perspective isn't really what reality is, but more so what you're creating it to be. Um, and then our last one is fire. Um, for trees, fire is actually very important for two main reasons. Um, the first one obviously being the sun. It gives it energy to go through with photosynthesis um, and grow and create sugars. All these plants are creating sugars and they all are contributing to the bigger ecosystem. Um, fire uh, in the more common sense, so like a campfire or a forest fire are also integral to trees, which we don't normally understand or um, associate with. Um, forest fires are actually really important for our ecosystems. Um, maybe not so much like the ones we're seeing out west. Those are a little more than natural forest fires. Um, but forest fires actually reset uh, a natural area. So they'll burn down all these trees and then plants and animals and birds that wouldn't have normally been there 
have the opportunity to move into that land. How we can connect to uh, fire would be through energy. So if you sat next to a fire or you feel the heat of the sun, you, you can um, feel a sort of comfort in yourself. And um, we connect to that through energy in ourselves and getting outdoors and um, using our energy outdoors instead of staying inside all the time. Now here at Riverwood, um, you can kind of use those four elements to connect uh, to all sorts of different animals and uh, insects and plants that rely on those elements as well. Uh, here at Riverwood, we are pretty unique to be in the middle of Mississauga. It is such a big city. And with everything going on right now, um, it's kind of like a refuge for myself and for all of these animals as well. We have many deer that come through here. We have a, a, a herd of 30 to 35 deer that run through here. We have foxes and uh, black capped chickadees and insects and uh, tons of amphibians and reptiles that call Riverwood home and use this place as a refuge. So I would just like to recommend that you guys use as a refuge as well because it will have all these healing properties um, and it will really help you going through these difficult times too. Now if you can't get to Riverwood or you'd rather bring it to your home there is a couple ways of doing so. Um, so I like to call this building a refuge at home. Um, this summer I actually built a pollinator garden in my backyard and uh, staying home and not being able to see my friends um, it was quite difficult, but I often turned to going and sitting by the pollinator garden and watching the bees and the butterflies come to this pollinator garden and seeing what I contributed to nature. It really calmed me down. It was really relaxing and uh, it was kind of like a hobby that I could um, change my mind if I was if I was anxious or nervous about something I could go in and um, garden. But other things you can do too, you can build a bee in a birdhouse. Um, that's an often uh, pretty popular craft with people. And I think a lot of people did that over uh, the shutdown. You can put a bird feeder and watch birds. Um, adding a pond or water feature to your backyard or off your balcony is, um, you'll attract a lot more than just birds. Um, a lot of insects use these little water features to lay their eggs in. Um, I have a small pond in my backyard that's man-made and we had frogs this summer and dragonflies coming in laying eggs and all sorts of things like that but it doesn't have to be huge it can be just a small little pond as well and the birds and wasps will really um, rely on this water feature especially when it's super hot outside. Um, what I say when dead trees rock is often we see dead trees as like this is ugly or um, that's uh, not aesthetically pleasing so often we take out dead trees but it that dead tree doesn't um, cause any danger to us, I'd really recommend leaving it there. And there's a couple reasons why. Um, when a dead tree is still standing, uh, a lot of bird species, woodpeckers in, in particular, love to use these dead trees as home and refuge. Um, bugs will come and climb in there and, and the woodpeckers will peck out um, all the bugs and eat those for food and also live inside the holes. Later on, different animals will climb into these woodpecker holes and use them as home too. Um, but once that dead tree has fallen over uh, and it's on the ground, we have salamanders and frogs and snakes that love to live under, under these dead trees and um, bugs that will break it down slowly too. So that's a great way of adding um, a refuge to your home in a very easy way. And then the last thing is changing your lawn mindset. And what I mean when I say change your lawn mindset is often when we're going through, um, if you're driving through a subdivision, um, everyone's lawn looks the exact same. It's green, it's cut, there's one tree growing straight out of the middle and that's it. And it's a very sterile environment and there's not a lot of biodiversity. Um, and I think it's this perspective that, that we need to look the exact same as each other or we're gonna be judged. But we really need to get away from this mindset and, you know, let weeds grow or plant a garden or plant more trees because these trees are all interconnected and letting our lawns be a refuge for many different animals as well. And then the last thing I'll say is not everyone has a backyard. Not everyone has a balcony even. Um, and that's completely okay. You can bring nature indoors as well. Um, and this will have healing properties to you for your mental and physical health. And these all have been 
proven to um, heal you in different ways. So simply opening windows, um, instead of just hiding away in AC or heating, opening your windows and feeling fresh air. Um, bringing indoor plants into your room or into your living room, your kitchen. Um, I have tons of indoor plants. I don't know about you guys. Do you have a lot of indoor plants too? Yeah, I, I have too many. <laughs> But they make me happy when I see them. So I try to keep them um, in a place that I'm often sitting down. So all of my plants are near my couch so that I, I'll often look at them. Opening drapes. So a lot of times if we're feeling sad or anxious, we'll want to close the drapes and hide away in a dark place. Um, but that has no uh, positive impacts on yourself. It may make you feel good for the moment. But in the long run, it's really not the greatest for us. Natural aromas, um, this can be anything from incense to a diffuser, but also um, going outside and just breathing in um, trees and flowers that actually has physical and mental healing properties. Um, some trees are proven to um, uh, increase your respiratory um, intake so that you can breathe in really um, with a lot of air and then breathe out and it, it actually has healing properties to it just by breathing in the smell of the tree. Um, and then decorating with nature images or, nat or natural items. So if you are in an office cubicle, um, kind of like this, this area I'm in right now, <laughs> if I decorated it with a few nature images, um, maybe something that makes you happy, it doesn't have to be nature necessarily, but something that makes you happy, um, acorns or anything natural that you found on the ground that makes you happy. I have a weird collection of rocks that make me happy for some reason <laughs> and I bring those into my room and it has healing properties as well. So you can bring nature indoors or outdoors or you can go to nature and um, all in all you can connect yourself to nature in some sense. Everyone has the opportunity to do that. So um, first of all Stephanie thank you so much for that that was amazing to hear about, you know, trees and um, nature and what you can do, you know, oh. indoors, outdoors. And obviously with the changing season and the rising COVID numbers, unfortunately, you know, everyone's kind of stuck at indoors. So, you know, Stephanie did mention some of the great things you can do from indoors. And, you know, I think what we want to address through this presentation is the fact that, you know, we're only listing a few things, right? You can expand from that small suggestion that we did. So, you know, Stephanie explained the whole nature aspect. Well, how can you connect with that? You know, it's all about making sure that you can create, create, have that connection. You know, you can create that connection. You can rejuvenate with nature, right? It's all about finding those key aspects. And I'm sure um, the next part will explain that a little bit more, uh, much more better. And Arushi, do we have any comments or anything? Any questions for any of us that we should? Um, no, not currently in the chat. Okay, can you guys ask us questions, please? <laughs> we want some questions. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be something specific about like nature. It can be. It can be about anything we've talked about in the presentation. Exactly. And this next portion, um, it's gonna. Um, we're gonna ask for a little bit more involvement from you guys, so you can type in your dis into the discussion um, panel as well. We are going to be doing a virtual nature journaling um, activity which I have never done before. So we'll see how it goes. Um, so if you haven't nature journaled before, I really suggest you do so. Uh, and basically it's about sitting somewhere outdoors and um, hyper-focusing on one thing that you found. It could be a pine cone, a flower, it could be a bird, it could be a, a cloud that you saw in the sky and that you thought was pretty. Um, nature journaling is really, interesting because it it slows us down in the moment it makes us mindful of the things that are around us um, and it really connects us to nature in a different way i kind of started doing nature journaling with birds um, mostly because i wanted to learn more about um, different bird species and once you start to focus on those that one thing in nature when you walk outside, it will never be the same again. You will always be kind of looking for different things. You'll be looking for the bird songs. You'll be looking for a specific bird. And um, I find it really unique when you start noticing those little things on the ground that you don't, you wouldn't normally notice unless you were doing nature journaling or you were trying to learn more about that specific thing. So I'm gonna show a couple videos um, that were taken here at Riverwood. Um, 
actually not all of them were taken. Most of them have, were taken at Riverwood. Um, a lot of the videos were from Dave Taylor. He is a wildlife photographer and he is phenomenal. If you ever have a chance, go to his YouTube page. He has tons and tons of videos of nature. And especially during these times when we can't necessarily always get outside, um, it's great to just even look at nature. So I'm gonna show a couple videos. Um, hopefully they're not too laggy. Uh, and what I want you guys to do is either get a piece of paper and draw or write a poem or write a couple words that um, that video makes you feel. Um, you can either share this in the discussion post. Um, we may be able to grant you access to um, share over audio. So if you wanna share um, video or audio, just let us know in the discussion post as well. Um, and it's really important to keep in mind when we're doing this nature journaling, it's not about having the greatest drawings or the best poem or it even to make sense. It's just about what you feel. So none of these pictures are mine. I cannot draw that well. Um, <laughs> I stole them off the internet. Um, but this is just kind of an example of what people are doing. So this is our first video here. I'm just going to give you guys a couple seconds to watch the video. You can write in the discussion panel if you want, what it makes you feel, um, if you want to do a drawing or write a poem or anything like that. Anything that's artistic. Um, and Arushi, if you want to keep us updated on if anyone's commenting. Um, I don't know, when I bring up the, um, the discussion panel, I'm just curious, can everyone else see it on the screen as well? Yeah. I see Juliana saying yes. Okay, so I'll just leave it to Arushi to do that then, so I don't um, bog up the thing. Um, we don't have any comments currently in the chat, but we do have two questions. Oh, okay, um, awesome. I don't know if you want to do that now during the videos or afterwards. Um, are they pertaining to this? I uh, know they're from before. Okay, maybe we'll we'll save them to the end if that's okay, and then um, if anybody wants to write in the discussion panel about this, I'll go to the next video as well. The audio for that. Just looking at the fire makes me feel so warm. I know. Very, I just want like marshmallows. I just want a blanket. <laughs> and grab like a hot chocolate or something. <laughs> this was like a perfect day where I got the sun to shine right on me and I had the heat of the fire and the fall colors around me. So okay. it's a lot different than today. Today's very gloomy. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely yeah, Instagram yeah. worthy, I guess. <laughs> yes. We'll we have go to a comment in the chat here um, from Danielle saying it's so lovely, it's very nurturing, and it reminds her of how important family is. Aww, that's so sweet. I definitely that's agree wonderful. with that. We'll go to the next one. A monarch butterfly. How are the videos showing up? Are they laggy at all or are they okay? Awesome. I'm glad Wi Fi is on my side today. <laughs> And we have a few more comments now okay. um, from Orja, who wrote, watching birds always makes me feel happy. It's always common watching other animals exist on the planet that we share. Aww. Yeah, it's always nice seeing any kind of animal. Um, today we had a walk, actually, a fall colors walk, and uh, it was funny. We had a little squirrel that found a stash of nuts that you could tell that wasn't its own stash it just had found it and it hit the jackpot and it lifted this log with its little arms and then was just eating right in front of us and it was so funny because we all crouched down and were watching it for so long but you sometimes take squirrels for granted you just see them and you're like oh it's just a squirrel but sometimes just slowing down and watching nature it's it's fun and the simple things in life you know what exactly <laughs> And we have a few more comments here, yeah. um, just in regards to the videos again, about how it brings up feelings of community, how um, people are in awe of nature, how it makes them feel peaceful, grateful, and blessed. It's very comforting. Lots of positive comments about the butterfly video, specifically, I think. This is a Dave Taylor video. I can't take, uh, I can't, um, take recognition from him. He did this video all on his own. It's really great. I'll go to the next one. This one might um, <laughs> might not be as relaxing for some people, but it's still supposed to spark some sort of emotion in you as well. Um, this is a garter snake that was found at Riverwood too. His little tongue's so cute. I know. They're smelly though. They're yeah. very smelly. <laughs> yeah, I'm terrified of snakes, so this is not 
my comfort zone, oh. but I mean, I can see like the relaxing aspect for people. So yeah. yeah. Come to Riverwood and I'll show you a snake. <laughs> <laughs> I am not, I'm going to be like six feet away. <laughs> <laughs> Another fun activity to do in, reg in regards to the monarchs, um, I know a lot of people who uh, raise them mm -hmm. as caterpillars and you get to watch them grow and release them. It also helps, um, monarch rearing helps uh, ensure that their population survives because uh, there's a lot of predators out there. So that's another really, really fun activity to watch them grow and they grow pretty fast. <laughs> And I'd like to say too, to someone on um, a participant on my walk this morning, um, she had a, a ball python as a, as a pet and she oh. loves snakes, but she said she can't get near dogs. She can't get near birds. She doesn't like any of that kind of stuff, but she loves snakes. So it's just funny. It's um, we definitely have different preferences and what relaxes us and what makes us happy. Um, so maybe I'll switch the slide just for Bansy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, this one. So this is a common thing you can do at Riverwood is feed our black cap chickadees. Um, this is about the time that they start feeding because the resources um, start to die down as plants are dying down, the seeds are kind of going away. So um, the chickadees stick around and they'll land directly on your hand to get a little treat from you basically during the winter months when they don't have a lot of resources. Um, so this was just the other day. So I suggest if um, you ever do come to Riverwood, just bring some um, sunflower seeds, obviously not salted or seasoned or anything like that. And you can often find these little guys following you around for some seeds. Are there any more comments, Arushi? Or? Yeah, there's a couple. Um... Just thought there was one comment from Kirsten about how the blue-gray gnat catchers reminded her of the joy she felt watching a female hummingbird feed her two nestlings. Oh, that was a nice comment. That's awesome. And they have the tiniest nest. That's, I've, I've actually never seen um, baby hummingbirds. So that's, that's really unique. That's awesome. Any others? Yeah, and Lucy also made a good point about the snake. Um, like certain circumstances in life, they're not always welcome, but they're necessary. That is 100% true. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's a great observation. Okay. Uh, question for you as well, Stephanie. Um, is Stephanie's offer to show Riverward open to anyone? They go there often. Uh, for like programs, do you think they're asking? Um, I believe they're asking about guided tours. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so all of our programs as of so far are filled up, unfortunately. Um, next Tuesday is our last one that we have actually up on the website. I would recommend subscribing to uh, the Riverwood Conservancy email list. Um, that's where we kind of send out all of our programs before. Um, so hopefully we'll have another Healing with Nature walk um, coming up after the one that's already full. Um, but we'll be offering more programs uh, end of October and into November for you guys to join too. Uh, just because we have such small participant um, numbers that we can really engage with on site right now, it is hard to reach everyone and they do fill up quite quickly. So I would just subscribe to our email list and you can go to our website to do that. And I'll go to the last video for um, this portion. And this one's more supposed to spark like a funny, um, <laughs> a funny feeling. This is a little uh, raccoon that we saw out our window trying to get some seeds from a bird feeder. Like education. <laughs> <laughs> quite uh, creative in the ways that they get there. I see some like reoccurring themes in the chat where I feel like a lot of people are saying they're feeling calm, they're feeling connected, all this stuff. So it just shows. And again, like studies have shown that you don't have to actually be out in nature to have that feel good um, sense happen to you. Um, studies have shown that even just watching a recording from the computer like we are doing now, just listening, like our senses are very, they're very sensitive, right? So um, you don't have to actually be outside to get that overall reaction on your body. It's, you're watching a video, this guy here is hilarious, this little raccoon, <laughs> it's making me laugh. It's gonna 
increase, again, those feel-good hormones, make you feel good. Um, Stephanie, we have another question in the, in the chat. I think it's about Riverwood's Nature Fall Walk. Okay. Um, Uzma is wondering if you could hold one on Saturday, um, as it seems like they're mostly on weekdays. Yes, so we have been holding, sorry, this is kind of um, in the middle of our program. I'm sorry if I, <laughs> I'm taking away from Juliana's next portion. Um, but uh, we have held two programs on the weekends on Saturdays. Um, and on site is very busy on the weekends. That's what we've experienced. Uh, there is sometimes no parking available at Riverwood and it does sometimes um, spark concerns about uh, social distancing and um, making sure both the participants and our staff members are safe. Um, but we should be having more weekend programs coming up soon. Um, just stay tuned to our uh, website or um, subscribe to the email list again and hopefully um, we'll have some weekend programs too. Uh, the main reason why we're offering them during the week is just to try to avoid uh, crowds as much as possible. But we had one last weekend and it was pretty successful too. Thank you. Yeah. And thanks for asking all the questions. I love that. All right, Juliana, you can take it away now. All right. So if y'all been uh, enjoying all those videos as much as I have been, uh, you <laughs> want to go out there, you want to get connected with nature, you want to kind of, again, um, kind of what Stephanie was talking about earlier, she, she's outside spending time with those birds, learning that, again, with your focus, your, your focus, it's not just the same bird, same pattern in their song. You're able to focus and differentiate between a blue jay and a robin. And so again, this is focus. It helps us, um, again, it can help reduce some of those symptoms of ADHD. A great way to go and learn, uh, help with your focus, help with your feel good is an app called iNaturalist. I love it. I know Stephanie loves it. It's amazing. You can get it on your phone. Um, and basically, uh, I think in the next slide, it shows kind of what we do. So here is an example, okay? So you can take a picture of anything out in nature, flowers, mushrooms, plants, organisms, um, bugs, mammals, birds, anything, humans, your dog, it works. I trust me on this one. You take a picture of it and you upload it and you put, what do you see, okay? And then after you press, what do you see? This app is gonna identify the picture that you have. If it's a plant, if it's um, an amphibian, it's gonna identify it to the closest, um, closest to species as you can get from your photo. If it can't go to species, maybe it'll go to the order. And again, that's more scientific, but it's gonna try to identify it as, as close as possible. And it's really cool. You can see also it shows you, you can input the date and time, the actual location that you found it at. And this is very important. Um, so for our next example, it's gonna show you this. Um, here, for example, this is uh, something that I took. I took a picture of a gypsy moth. I don't know if you guys have heard about these things, but um, they are very invasive and they have exploded this year. And so here I've taken a picture of a gypsy moth. Uh, I've identified what it was. Okay, look, the app is telling me this looks like a gypsy moth, okay? So um, as you can see here, once you give it some time, there's people who actually go and um, properly identify, say, either no you know this this looks a little bit more like this type of moth not quite a gypsy moth or yes this is a gypsy moth and so what they do it goes to the scientific level and it can actually become a part of very important projects in the world okay so here you can see my moth has contributed to projects of moths of ontario and invasive species of ontario and this is important because as you can see um, on our little uh, map here all those red dots are all the pictures that people have posted saying, I've seen a gypsy moth here. And so you can see where is this thing traveling? If it's been Southern Ontario and stayed in Southern Ontario, if someone from Upper Ontario finds it, posts on this app, they can see that it's continuing to travel. So not only are you learning, this is a gypsy moth, you're learning to identify 
focus. You're able to feel good because you're contributing to the scientific community, which can be so important. And you're able to also track and see some other pictures of what people, what other people have found. And another really amazing thing um, that has happened is, uh, for example, bumblebees. They're very, very important. We know that they're in decline. We know that there's many different species of bumblebees. And um, what some of these apps have actually found is people have have thought that this this bumblebee or an organism, a plant or a fungus, a mushroom, they've been extinct from this region, let's say region of Ontario for so many years. Someone can take a picture and post it, say, what is this? And they realize it's not extinct, it's still in the location. So not only are you learning from this app, you're feeling good, you're contributing, and you're also focusing. It's amazing. This app, once again, is called iNaturalist. And I'd like to just pop in there. I was super excited when Juliana wanted to talk about this more, um, but the Riverwood Conservancy just started its own project on iNaturalist. Um, so if you do come to, um, to Riverwood to walk around and you wanna use iNaturalist, I would join um, this project. It's really cool. You can see how many identifiers there are and people um, will comment on your, your post and what you've seen. Um, so yeah, just join in if you can in the conversation. Um, we had over um, 2000 now um, since I started it, which is great before it had about 1500, but we just started this project and we have only eight people that are um, part of the project. So please join if you can. I know where I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say the same thing. Yeah. All right, so our last thing that we're gonna do here is one more activity. And I just want to um, see in the comments, does anyone know what grounding is or have they ever heard of what is grounding? I'll just give it a minute for you all to um, comment. You can just write yes or no if you want. Yeah. Has anyone heard of what grounding is? Mm-hmm. You yeah. see the comments being in the now. Like electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite electricity, but. <laughs> so we got some yeses, some nos. A good connection. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, it is a great, great um, technique, and we're going to do some today. Um, and so if we go to the next side slide, we'll show um, what this is. And again, I see connecting to the energy of the earth. Again, yes, that can be associated with grounding. Um, in this example, what is grounding? So again, um, I think up up here, someone com Lucy commented being in the now, and that is correct in what I am referring to. So a lot of the times, um, let's say um, when we're anxious, as an example, we're anxious, we're in our head, we don't know what to do, we're panicked. Uh, people who have panic attacks, this is a great way of how to reduce that anxiety and calm down. So a lot of the times when we're in a state, um, a state of even dissociation and how I would describe what dissociation is, is uh, when you kind of feel like you're in a th third person, I kind of describe it as like, like you're in a cloud and you're looking down at yourself. You're not really in with the present. And so we can have dissociation. We can just have being in your thoughts um, and not being able to get out of them. And so grounding helps us get out of here and be with the present, be with our surroundings, okay? And um, so how do we do this? And it's very simple, we engage with our senses. And again, our senses are very important. They tell us information about um, our surrounding environments. And so a lot of the times, um, let's say again, if someone's having a panic attack, we help them to ground come back down, go from a state of elevation all the way up here, panic, 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 to calm down, take a deep breath, and we do this with grounding. And so a lot of the times what we can do is, um, I can tell someone, okay, I want you to describe to me what are five things you can see, just in your surrounding environments, what are five things you can see? What are four things you can hear? What are three things that can you feel? You can feel your skin, your clothes, if you're in the grass, you feel the grass. What are two things you can smell? What is one thing that you can taste? So again, it's you're changing your focus from in here, oh my goodness, and you're starting to focus on things in the surrounding. And the more you focus on it, the more it will calm you down. Because when you focus on something, you lack focus on the other thing that you were thinking about before, because now you're focused on one thing. And so we wanna do this by, um, we're gonna do some grounding today by using 
nature. So I'm going to do an activity. Um, I know we asked you guys to um, go out in nature and try to bring a few items. It can be anything, pine cones, leaves, sticks. Uh, as you can see, there's lots of different things here. Um, I'm going to use my first example. It's going to be with pretty leaves because it's fall. Um, so I want everyone to grab their items, whether it's a leaf, whether it's something else. And let's begin our grounding activity. I want you guys to describe to me, you can either describe it to yourself or you can comment in the chat. Let's start with one object, okay? Describe to me, what are you seeing with this object? What is the color of your object? Okay. And again, grounding doesn't have to just be, what are the things you smell? What are the things you taste? What, what do you see? You can go in depth with the questions because the whole point of it is getting your focus on that one object and getting your focus away from whatever that previous thing was. So what does this object remind you of? What's the color of it? To me, this is a beautiful reddish orange leaf. I got a little bit of yellowish tinge up here. It's not just a red leaf, but it is a reddish orange leaf with a little bit of orange here. Okay, what does this coloration in your leaf or your object, what does it remind you of? Can you think of um, a time in your, in, in your past? Do you have a memory of what these colors remind you of? Because I know this one here is my example. It reminds me of sunsets because it goes um, a reddish color to an orange. Um, I, I like going to Sabo Beach in the summertime and it's all nice and warm and we watch the sunset. Makes us feel really, really good. What else does, does it remind you of, the colors of the leaf? Mine reminds me of that campfire that we saw earlier. It does. It has like yellow and red and it's kind of chaotic. And what does that campfire remind you of? What does it make you feel? Um like relaxed and warmth and that everything's gonna be okay. Yeah. For me, um, mine is a little bit like tinted yellow. So, I mean, it's not tinted, it's actually it's like fully yellow. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, for me, it reminds me of the pumpkin patch um, in Mississauga that I go with my friends every single year, except this year. So um, it just reminds me of, you know, and we're, when we're there, they have this huge like leaves. Um, they've just like raked up the leaves in one area for like kids to jump in. And I always remember seeing like kids just like jumping in and parents kind of like just pulling their kids out. Cause it's like, so like, it's so, you know, all the kids are there and everything, but it just reminds me of like those little simple things. And like what Juliana said, it reminds me of the sunset, just, you know, the aspect of yellow. So yeah, that was for me. And just listening to your, um, your description of it, uh, we all have a, a lit up smile, a lit up face. And so um, I just want to quickly mention another thing what you can do is you don't have to just focus on one object, but you have your other object, compare and contrast them. What is, this is a red, this is also a red, but it's a much darker red. What does this red remind you of? I mean, to me, this red reminds me of like a lipstick that I have. It reminds me of a night that I went out and it was a lot of fun with my friends, bringing back to another memory. And so I wanna ask you all a quick reflection. Going back to what Bansi, um, what we started with, with Bansi's um, one page with all her words, when we asked, how are you feeling right now? I want to ask you that question again. What is in your head right now? If you feel comfortable, please share in the comments. How are you feeling? What, what is your focus on right now? And it's fine. If you're still stressful, you can, you can mention that. You know, we're just kind of hoping for some answers. We're just hoping for some, yeah, some answers. Mm -hmm. like for me um when I you know after this powerpoint for me I'm a little bit more relaxed you know in the beginning I was a little bit more stressful um just because you know like with 
getting everything set up and that kind of stuff and just with school and stuff. But, you know, throughout this presentation, I completely forgot about schoolwork. So I'm a lo lot more calm, a lot more relaxed, and a lot more better mood. So even if I have to go after, you know, to study or whatever, I'm in much more mood, like a better mood for me to study. So that, that's my input. And I think other people are feeling similarly to you from what it seems like in the chat. There's people talking <laughs> about feeling calm, feeling light, feeling lighter, less input from random things um, coming at me. So that's nice to hear. That is great to hear because we were concerned that um, how we were going to get this across um, through a virtual platform. And um, I hope that it came across in a way that could actually calm you, even though we weren't outdoors. Mm -hmm. And exactly. Like, again, the, the ground with the grounding, it's going to, again, throughout the presentation and with the grounding activity, it helps you to again, focus on one object. And you can see how just within this hour, we've, we've changed from feeling stressed, overwhelmed, anxious. And now just from connecting a little bit with nature, doing a little bit of a grounding activity, getting your focus on something else, we're smiling, we're engaging, we're increasing those happiness hormones. And we're seeing a change from stressed, overwhelmed, anxious to feeling calm, feeling light, feeling connected. And that's very important. And this is just one way you can do um, how you can heal with nature. So I guess, um, Arushi, um, I know you mentioned that we had those few questions in the end. If you want to just, I guess, ask them like out loud and then maybe we could, if it, unless like it mentions a name or something, then you can just direct it like that or. Yeah. Or so we have three questions in the Q&A. Awesome. Um, so the first one is from Mohammed, and it's for Stephanie. Um, so Stephanie, could you share what types of plants you grow indoors that would grow with minimal light or not so much sun? Um, the best plant to grow um, with minimal sun is snake plant. Um, it's this cool little pointy plant. Um, you've probably seen it before. You can get these things at like Walmart. Um, and you can just leave it in a corner for <laughs> many weeks and it will be fine. <laughs> Not that I've done that, um, but it doesn't require a lot of water or sunlight. So snake plants are a really good one. Another one surprisingly is aloe. They often like to be left alone. Um, I've overwatered my aloe before and I'm sure all of us can experience the same thing that it's died because you cared too much for aloe. So I would stick with snake plant or aloe. Those are pretty easy plants to take care of and they don't require a lot of um, care. Um, I think the one thing I would want to add is like the plant that I grow at home is a bamboo plant. That is also similar yeah. to um, like it doesn't require sunlight. I have left it like I got it as a gift like maybe two years back and like now it's huge. It, you just have to leave it in a water. You can, you can put it in water, you can put it in soil, however you, you know, you want it to grow, whatever you have available at your home. Um, and similar to what Stephanie said, you know, it doesn't require a lot of um, take care, like maybe like a tomato plant does, like that requires sun. So maybe right now, you know, fall, you can't probably, you probably can't grow a tomato plant. So maybe sticking to plants like this. And this one also you can get at like Ikea, Walmart, I've seen like very small ones, like at various places. So yeah, that's a great one. And the second question we have here um, that I think would apply to any of you um, is from Jane. And Jane is asking, what role do you see spiritual beliefs having in relation to the topic? We talk about having high spirits and lifting our spirits. So I was wondering how you would incorporate this into ecotherapy. That's a very good oh, wow. question. That's a very good question. Andy, do you want to take it? <laughs> um, I mean, definitely. Like, I think the aspect of, you know, spirituality and just, um, just in general, like your beliefs, I think play a big role. And it's kind of that unspoken kind of rule, or it's that unspoken kind of thing. You know, spirituality, I'm, I'm spiritual. I, spirituality plays a role in my life. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, at, at, during these kinds of times, um, you know, whatever helps, do that you know there's no rule book right with with our presentation what we've kind of emphasized is that nature you know that is something that you see every day you know you open your window there's a tree outside um you go to bed you can hear the sounds of birds maybe <laughs> depending on where you live um but it's just that incorporating that nature aspect and then maybe tying it to you know with spirituality with that of course 100 percent. you know maybe you could do like a mindfulness like a yoga thing if that is something that's part of your spirituality 
you could do that maybe outside in the morning, you know, outside in your backyard, sit on the grass and do that if that works for you. Again, this is, I'm just being very like straightforward and my example is not very so distinct. But spirituality is, you know, just help, it, again, spirituality also helps you with those grounding techniques, right? We've talked about that throughout our presentation, um, through Juliana's um, examples, through Juliana's activities and through Stephanie's examples about how it's important to find that grounding aspect. If that comes through um, religious, like religion, so be it. That's perfectly all right. And, and it's your way, you know, it's your niche. Figure out how you want to incorporate it. How much, how big you want it, how little you want it. Yeah, I guess if anything you want, want to add. Yeah, I, th I think it's great. Um, I'm, I, don't, I don't actually know, I'm just assuming, but I'm assuming that we all have different spiritual beliefs. And one great thing about nature is that you can get outside and you can all connect with one another. Um, and it doesn't matter what spiritual beliefs you have, um, you're all connected in one way and that's through nature. So I think that's a really good question and very yeah. difficult to answer. Banzi, you did a really good job at that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm hoping I did a no, you did. That was wonderful. Thank but you. Again, that topic, like Stephanie said, it's very big. It's it's a very big topic, and unfortunately, we just don't have the time to kind of get into that. But definitely, that is something you know you can explore. We can explore maybe for future presentations. Yeah, that's awesome. And we have a few more questions. I guess we'll just do those quickly, just to be mindful of the time, because I know it's six twelve now. Um, um, Hasu is asking, can we get a soft copy of the presentation? Um, so it will be. Um, I, I don't know if they mean the PowerPoint itself. Um, That's what I understood, yeah. Okay, just the specific PowerPoint. So I could probably send that out to the attendees. Um, I get a list um, if it's signed up through email, I believe. Um, otherwise, um, this video will be posted on YouTube and our Facebook page as well. So if you wanted to go back and watch it again, you could. Um, but I'll try to figure out how I can um, send out the actual PowerPoint because I think it's really important for us too. Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you. And we have another question. Um, my apple tree died this year, so it was removed. What is your suggestion for a new plant to consider to replace it? Hmm, uh, maybe something, hmm, something native would be kind of interesting. Um, yeah. Just so because of the changing season, I wouldn't recommend like an orange tree. Unfortunately, it just won't grow. Um, but maybe for the summer, um, one thing I like to do is plant. I mean, one thing I'm going to do next summer is plant a lemon tree. So maybe you can try and do that. I know they grow really fast compared to like an apple tree, but you know, I don't know about winter. <laughs> um, planting, yeah, planting something like that, or even something, um, Something, a plant that's really uh, quick growing is sumac. I don't know, it has this um, bright red leaves right now and um, it has all of these sorts of seeds and it offers a lot to squirrels and birds and all sorts of stuff. It does take over your lawn though. This is like a plant that will grow everywhere. Um, so that's a great one, it's native, um, it's great for the environment, but it will take over your backyard if you let it. <laughs> Cute. And we have one more question here from Vina. Um, she's just saying, saying that she missed the beginning and wanted to know what was mentioned about the salmon run. Yeah, um, I just quickly mentioned that it was the um, kind of the end of the salmon run now. Um, every year the salmon migrate up the Credit River to spawn. Um, and unfortunately, all of the salmon die after they spawn. It's part of their life cycle. They all die. So I went down to the Credit River today and it was quite smelly, if I'm going to be honest. Um, <laughs> so if you were interested in seeing something like that, it's still pretty interesting. Um, these fish can be three feet long and like 30 pounds so it is it is still pretty cool and um there are some salmon still in the river actually swimming up the credit river that you can see their backs there and that's about it in terms of questions and comments um we do have some feedback saying great speakers and they learned a few ideas so thank you for that oh and we're glad that's awesome i also have uh something i wanted to share with you guys because i know stephanie you're talking about um bringing nature indoors and uh, creating stuff with nature. And so this is something, looks complicated, but something simple that I created with nature. Uh, it's literally just like a margarine tin and I decorated it uh, with stuff from nature. You can see there's some pine leaves. Um, I painted my pine cones um, and I just use, you can use the centerpiece. I put in my room 
Also what I've done, uh, I don't have it here, but I've got acorns and I, I, I glue them to a string and I hang them up and I draw, I put glue like googly eyes on them. So there's like lots of different creative, I know I'm crazy, but no, it's a lot of fun. No, it's a lot of fun. fun. You can paint them different colors, but yeah, like here's just an example right. of something you can do. Um, also put, LED lights. I was going to say put LED, LED lights around it for like Christmas. Like, you know, I mean, yeah, like, you can. Not you Halloween, can. not Christmas. Sorry. <laughs> There's a lot of different things you can do with getting stuff from nature. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. And also, just want to quickly mention again, um, if you are interested in our meditation through art workshops that happen monthly with Peel Psychology, um, you can also reach us. Uh, send us an email at um, um, www.peelpsychology.com. Yeah, or she has mentioned it in the chat. You can just use that website click on it, it will have all the information about our workshop, what kind of services we provide, um, how you can reach out to us, like contact information, email, ev it, everything will be there. So just copy the URL and <laughs> you're good to go. Wonderful. Well, I think that is about it. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be this long, but it's wonderful. <laughs> everyone was so engaging. Um, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, once again, keep an eye out for any of our future programs, um, and hopefully I will see some of you guys at the Healing with Nature walk on Tuesday. Um, if you have signed up, no one just show up to the, to the walk. <laughs> we can only handle so many people. Um, but thank you again to our speakers, guys. This was awesome, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you all so thank much. You, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have, have a good night. night. Have a good night. Stay safe.